Right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this, the September 7th, 2023 Police and Public Safety Committee meeting. I'm going to begin by taking attendance. I have Council Member Brennan here, Supervisor Puccioni, myself, Lieutenant Todd Frenier, Town Attorney Finnan, Judge Schwinton, Comptroller Greenwood, Seth Goldstein, yes. Confidential Secretary Jean Foley, did I send you a note? First order of business, we have uh, to approve some minutes. Can I have a motion to accept the June 1st, 2023 minutes? Motion. Is there a second? Yes, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I need a motion to accept the July 6th, 2023 minutes. Motion. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? And then I need a motion to accept the August 3rd, 2023 minutes. Any second? All those in favor? Opposed? All right. All right. Beginning operationally, our department received a response from New York State DOT regarding our ongoing Route 7 analysis. And we're going to be working collaboratively, collaboratively with them on traffic calming measures to continue to address this highway. Um, Detective Munger spoke with one of the representatives today. It sounds like they really want to meet with the town and talk about different options um, that the town as a whole would be supportive of for traffic calming measures. Um, and he explained to them that the town was very interested in having those conversations. And so I think we need to schedule a meeting Excellent. and head over and have those discussions. Forward to it. Our Lexapol policy manual is near completion. Uh, we have exactly one policy left to do. And when it's, it's done, we're going to apply for New York State accreditation. Um, for those of you out there that don't know what New York State accreditation is, very quickly, I've done something now to just read it. Uh, it's a voluntary program that's designed to improve an agency's effectiveness, efficiency, and professionalism, promotes training, and fosters public confidence in law enforcement. Um, Agencies must meet a set of standards in three categories, including administration, training, and operations. It provides formal recognition that an agency meets or exceeds expectations of quality, demonstrates that the agency performs in a professional manner, has formalized policies in place to govern its operational practices and procedures, and that its employees contribute to the agency's mission and know what is expected of them. I've talked about this before coming out of police reform. Um, accreditation is the gold standard in New York State policing. And we are very happy to say that we are right there. We're right there, and hopefully soon in the very near future, we're going to be able to apply for it and work towards it. It's not a short process. Um, as long as the Lexapol policy manual and, and transitioning was a process, there are certain agencies that it takes quite a while um, for them to become accredited. I don't anticipate it taking us years, per se, um, but there's going to be have to be something that we're going to go through where uh, myself, the town supervisor, are going to have to sign a document committing the resources necessary to apply for it. So when that comes up, I don't know how we need to do the mechanism. So also under operations, um, we oh, hold, are we done with that topic? I just want to say thank you for working so hard on that. It's a big step forward, and I really appreciate all the work, both of you and the department. It's a group effort. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of change. You know, just all of a sudden take a policy manual and hand it to people and overnight they know it um, as a part of this effort. Just for instance, recently we turned on daily training bulletins, which are really exciting. Every day um, you go through, or every other day, I had it set up where our officers uh, through Lexapol are taking essentially a quiz on our classes to learn them better and ensure compliance. So um, that's really good stuff. And that's what modern day police agencies do. So I'm going to send up with that. Towing bid for 2024. Um, we've been getting solicitations from different towing agencies about being put on our tow rotation. And historically, to my knowledge, we have never gone out for bid. However, uh, we, myself, Attorney Finnan have discussed this, and we think it's imperative that we put together a formalized process and sort of limit down the vendors that we're using so that we don't have, you know, five or 10 different vendors that we're using with some very uh, spelled out parameters under which we would accept folks to be able to tow our vehicles. Um, in conjunction with that, we've talked about possibly 
working towards eliminating the impound lot um, and allowing tow agencies, because there are a lot of tow agencies for other municipalities that actually they store the vehicles and they collect the fees and they kind of deal with the business side and we just get the money from them. Whereas now we kind of get all the money and send it out to court. So maybe a change in that relations. Um, when we get to that point, we'll have further discussions as we get closer to, to that. You wouldn't completely get rid of your impound now, would you? No, certainly not. Okay. It would I think a chain of custody is nope. for nope. impounded evidence. Yeah, no, well, I mean, absolutely not. For evidentiary purposes, of course, we would always keep our impound lot. It wouldn't go away. This is more for just the run-of-the-mill standard towing of a vehicle based on maybe a suspended license or something of that nature. Um and it would hopefully expedite the process for the police officers to get them back on the road as well quicker because that is something that takes a while to, to impact the big bunting team. So traffic division. And we just spoke out loud in town board meetings about traffic division. And we want to work to form it this year um, to begin laying the groundwork to address ongoing traffic concerns and further conduct traffic analysis, um, including accident investigations, traffic safety grants, and our new bus patrol program, which I'm going to speak about here in a little while. Um, in conjunction with this, uh, I would really like to see us. We have a budgeted supplemental sergeant position for 2023. Um, myself and Comptroller Greenwood have spoken about it. Um, Todd Subrana and I have spoken about it. Councilman Brennan and I have spoken about it. I think that we need to consider promoting somebody now that staffing has kind of lit, um, it's kind of leveled out. We're getting more people here. Um, we're looking to build this because I think we do need some direct supervision, um, specifically on the bus patrol program. I think that there's going to be somebody assigned to it, our grants programs. Um, we're looking to build in conjunction with Skanky County, certain accident reconstruction team, things of that nature. And I think it would only make sense from an operational and supervision standpoint to have somebody with rank overseeing the buses. So um, I have already asked for the list through civil service because we do have an active list. Um, and we'll look to kind of address that and discuss that moving forward. Clean equipment. Our new 606 is currently being outfitted, so it's going to be ongoing. We recently were able to purchase 10 shields. Um, we have new batons on order, and we're getting helmet samples um, for our members to try on for purchase. These were all budgeted items for this year. Um, and now that we're kind of sort of past the halfway point, we're going to start making a lot of the purchases that we had budgeted for um, for 2023 for equipment. We also recently purchased the Honda generators. Um, we talked about this. This was a budgeted item. Also, we have a lot of old generators that are incredibly large and heavy, um, and they're not easy to maneuver around when we need to use them and deploy for uh, traffic crashes, lights going out, things of that nature. Uh, these new generators are, are really light compared to the other ones and are hopefully gonna be uh, utilized, be able to be utilized by all our members. So that's good though. Our building, our fencing and wall around the rear of MPD. I spoke with um, Ray Smith the other day, so Lieutenant Ray Smith, regarding this, he's gonna get a quote for fencing. Um, I really need everybody to chime in on what we want it to look like. Um, as I told him very specifically that I uh, don't want it to look too, I, I don't want to walk, right? We need something that is transparent, but it does what we need to do. As part of the Department of Homeland Security, when they came out and they kind of did their analysis, they you know they described uh, that we needed more cameras. They talked about us having um, possibly uh, a secure area behind the building for a lot because there's a lot of uh, infrastructure back there, but also police vehicles with weapons and things of this nature that are continuously back there. We transport. Um, Folks we have in custody, sometimes we can't use the sound for it, and we have to actually take them out side of the parking lot. And we have civilians walking their dogs, uh, riding their bicycles through, driving through our lot because they don't listen to the sign a lot of times. Um, so I think that it would behoove us to have a gate with a fence, um, excuse me, a fence with a gate that slides so we can kind of secure up at least a portion of that area back there. So maybe um, exit gate as well, yes. Gates on both sides. What we initially described or, or talked about was, I don't know, depending on the quote, if we would have all of the monies to do all the way around, but at least to the bridge. So it would kind of go where the former walls were across along 
the wood line to the bridge is what we want to discuss with some sort of gate where we could at least have our um, staff members be able to walk in through the gate if they need to, because we usually come through the back door. Um, and sometimes the judges do and things of that nature. So, but as we get closer, maybe we can also kind of talk about different options that we're able to have. Cameras? Next time, we'll about it. Yep. Or the trips I can see. Okay. Is that my camera stuff? Sure. So, um, Charlie was able to pull out one of the wires from the front conduit and bring four new wires out. So I was able to put four new cameras outside uh, in the front of the building. <clears throat> um, I'm hoping to be able to link that up, uh, at least one of them with a uh, license plate camera reader uh, that will hopefully alert you guys when there's a, uh, a wanted car coming into town hall. Um, the back, um, the back camera that used to be pointed at the Sally Port. Um, we're hoping in the next month or two that Charlie's going to get to pulling those wires, out, pulling the wire out, and putting three cameras in where the one was. I added another two cameras in the basement uh, to cover some of the secure areas for the police department. Um, I'm hoping to get some more interior cameras maybe this winter. Uh, by the clerk's office, I know she requested one. Uh, a couple other places, supervisors, entryway, you know. Uh, but we're making progress there. The system is set up and and good to go for up to sixty four cameras. Uh, my next project, when it comes to cameras, is going to start uh, looking at the parks to help you guys these crimes out there. Uh, so making progress. We, Seth and I have been discussing, and I'll just for the record, I think we need to really get cameras up in our parks because we've had a series of smash and grabs at Lions Park where people are breaking out windows and stealing things. Um, we've had other instances where maybe there's some vandalism done that's on a road. Um, and even from a liability perspective, uh, for the town, I think it would behoove us to look at a camera system so that so he does get hurt, and let's say we had some footage of it or something of that nature. Uh, but also from a solvability, you know, crime solvability factor, it would only help us to have cameras, um, even if we only had them, you know, active where it was certain hours of the day at night or something for that effect, just to give us a little bit more better access to things moving forward. So it seems like the one that you put at the town pool helped with all of those issues. It did. Um, the one that the camera on the stick program the, the, that we favorably call it um, was able to catch capture one of the cars from the smash and grab. Unfortunately, uh, the license plate on the car was stolen and uh, uh, Detective Daly tracked down the car was involved in another crime. But unfortunately, that's that's where that ended. So, you know, had we gotten some pictures of the people. That probably would have helped them further. But, so. but, but just to be clear, had Seth not put that up, we would have absolutely not. I mean, like when I say nothing, we, we've had nothing. People are seeing it. Somehow this is happening very quickly. Um, it's like organized. Um, that, those particular instances are very organized. So, yes. But I do have to say, I appreciate Seth. I appreciate uh, Charlie Bergami, the new camera system. If you know what our old cameras, as far as visibility, Zoom functions, um, these are very much better. So, yeah, they're, they're 4K. So, very, they're very as good as your TV. Yes. So, okay, we have a lot of training to talk about. Our department is completing a trained unit on communications for Police One Academy. Um, the administration of the Michigan Police Department and our sergeants will be attending the DCGS Symposium September 26th, each one of the We went to that last year. We had a good time. That's kind of a lot of leadership uh, training, all. Um, all of New York State is invited to it, and a lot of leaders and administrators and sergeants go to it. You can kind of pick and choose your classes that you want to take over that three-day period. And I thought it was uh, very informative. There was a lot of good education on wellness and mental health and things of that nature. Law enforcement and communities, um, a lot of good networking happens as well. The Michigan Police Department Administration has applied, so myself, 
that the Chief Twitty and Lieutenant Frenier have applied to attend the FBI National Academy Associates Leadership Program. That is a lot to say. Um, this is sort of a first ever program that was created. There's the uh, FBI National Academy that sat at Quantico, and they decided to create a program specific to New York State for a certification that is kind of a branch off of that without having to go for, I think the, and I, I think the National Academy is six or eight weeks in Quantico. This would allow us all to take three different sessions. Um, there's one in October, there's one in November, and there's one in December, and there's three days each um, that we would go and we would take uh, various courses on leadership and executive leadership and otherwise. And then we would actually all have to write a paper based on a topic that they're going to provide to us that's successful. So we've all applied. That doesn't mean we're going to accept it, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and if we all get the opportunity to do it, I think it's going to be very cool. I am going to be attending the International Association of Chiefs, Chiefs of Police Conference October 14th through 17th in San Diego, California, as a panelist for the Small Rule and Tribal Body Worn Camera System Grant Program through the DOJ. I sat on two different um, webinars. Was it two different? It was one that was formally recorded, and I think the other one was not recorded. The DOJ basically put together panelists for different uh, agencies that had applied for this grant to talk about our successes and challenges of building our programs and then rolling our programs out for our body and camera systems. And I was one of three chiefs in the country that was asked um, to go help and be a panelist, which is apparently a pretty big deal. Um, they keep teasing me about it when I talk to them because I keep asking them if they're sure they want me, um, <laughs> but they do. And so I'm going to be attending. I think it's um, a testament to the hard work and the amazing people we have here. And I said that today. You know, I talked about Seth, I talked about Baga, I talked about our entire agency um, and all the hard work that we put in as a team together collaboratively for this. And so I think it's going to be pretty awesome to be able to represent all of us at this conference and be able to hopefully help small agencies that are also applying for and implementing body and camera programs. Sergeant Henry is going to be instructing cultural diversity and bias related incidents at the Zone 5 Regional Law Enforcement Academy on September 15. Our agency is going to participate in rescue task force training hosted by the Santee County Sheriff's Office at Dwaynesburg High School September 16th and 17th. Officers Douse and Officer Hansen are scheduled to attend with Detective Sergeant John Connor assisting with instruction. The crew of Brian continues training at the Zone 5 Academy. That's ongoing still. Um, still good reports about everything he's doing. Our newest officer, Officer Cody Hansen, continues to complete his in-service FTO training. Um, so far, uh, he feels like he's always been here. Um, yeah, he's doing well. He's doing very well. So. Our agency is going to conduct our range training, our fall range training, October 3rd and 4th. I say this out loud um, because on those dates, you may hear gunshots if you're down by the river. When we say that every single time, just to put that out, our uh, Unified Communication Center will know as well. So if people do call, um, they'll understand that there may be any training going on. So hopefully to put some minds at ease. Our department's gonna conduct department-wide emergency vehicle operations course refresher training on September 11th. Um, we recently, in the past, when did Derek go? Uh, yeah, it was the beginning of this year. Beginning of this year. January, February. Uh, for the first time ever, our department has a, an EVOC trainer. Uh, Officer Derek Breslin put in for it, showed interest in it. I don't know that anybody has ever put in for it, to my knowledge. And so we sent him, and we have an instructor now on uh, safe vehicle operation as an emergency responder. And we're going to put everybody through that training. Um, I wasn't going to mention it, but uh, we'll talk about it now as well. We're talking about actually potentially hosting a defensive driving course. Um, for our police department members and potentially their spouses or a single family member, depending on how yeah, many spots we have. We have to work the details on it. Okay. So <laughs> we're looking to do that hopefully coming up here soon. Citizen correspondence, some ongoing things. Marita Aguilar had requested the stop sign North Allendale Backer Street. I know 
We had a public hearing last meeting. Now we're going to put that through resolution for this meeting. Elizabeth Reynolds was requesting Fairfax be evaluated for unsafe speed. Officer Munger did deploy um, our speed trailer, and I'll just go over the findings really quick. Find it. So uh, the speed limit on Fairfax is 30 miles an hour. The analysis time period was from August 10th to August 16th. Um, we analyzed 1146 vehicles. The average speed was 14 miles an hour, and the 85th percentile was 24 miles. Um, so based on that analysis, as it currently stands, I don't know that we necessarily have uh, a continuous speed issue. I know that he's going to work with uh, Mr. Arnold's over there to continue to have discussions and maybe look to see if there's like a singular vehicle that she's describing or something that I could kind of figure that out for the uh, residents in that area. Frank Chapler had requested the stop sign Wyoming at a big graph due to vehicles coming off Wyoming and not yielding to pedestrian traffic. Again, this was on for public hearing last meeting. It's going to resolution the stop sign this meeting to convert from a yield to stop. I didn't have any new, did anybody have any other new things? Oh, okay. Town events, coffee with a cop, the senior center. Again, every third Tuesday monthly, I was there. Um, Deputy Chief Twitty came with me last month, we had a good time. It was nice introducing him to all of our, our seniors up there and we had some good laughs. Target, they have requested additional dates um, for Coffee with the Cop. They are realizing what a success um, and possibly in conjunction what a deterrent it is having us there. And uh, so we're going to announce those once we finalize those things. The farmer's market continues um, every weekend. We have the Carrot Festival coming up this weekend, Sunday, September 10th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Abuda Akeem. The Mohawk Hudson River Marathon is going to be October 8th at 8 a.m. And I know that uh, Deputy Chief Twitty is looking to put together a meeting to kind of finalize those details with everybody. And then last but not least, we have the 9-11 ceremony at Town Hall beginning at 8.30 on September 11th. So, the town clerk, I didn't receive anything. Judge, do you have anything for the quarter? Everything is going swimmingly. That's where it is. I didn't receive anything from the fire departments. The school district, um, we've been talking about these Knox boxes. I have been told they are on the buildings. Deputy uh, Chief Woody spoke with them today, and they are installed. He was going to drive around and take a look at them. The keys are not in them yet. <laughs> Um, but we're working with them to get that done, hopefully by the end of next week. Boss Patrol, we received an email today that the school district at their Board of Education meeting did vote and did sign the opt-in agreement. And so does that have a resolution for us as well? Okay, so we'll probably put that up for resolution. Thank you for continuing those discussions at the school district. Jessica and we're going to get there. Personnel. Our agency continues to evaluate resumes for potential lateral police officer transfers. I put this on tentatively. We have what appears to be a very good candidate. And we're still working through the background process and physical medical process. Um, so it's possible. It's possible we get an after this meeting, but it's it, Probably more likely than not that we're looking at something like that. Officer Douse, Heather Douse, has uh, completed her probation. I'm happy to say she's doing a great job. Uh, we're glad to have her here, and we're looking for her to be made permanent. Under other, we were approached by our local Lowe's, and they wanted to donate a grill to us. Uh, they had a grill that's brand new in the box. That's very nice. They brought it over to us and we were able to meet their team of uh, managers and loss prevention and other. And uh, we're hoping to utilize it for some community engagement. Possibly, I talked to the doctor today about getting everybody together for an employee appreciation day, something of that nature here. So we're going to have to do a resolution to accept that. Who's going to get together? Most likely, Josh Weiner. That's what he does. Um, I'm going to ask him. But if not, we'll uh, talk we about it. Oh, first, Josh, put it together. Yeah. <laughs>
but yeah, we're uh, it's it's an answer. I don't understand food too for it tells you the internal temperature. I mean, I actually asked them, I said, I don't understand why are you and there's something where if it's last year's bottle, they can't, they have to push it out like themselves. So they've got to donate. And they said they gave one to us, and then there were two other um, local departments. I don't know if it was a fire department and then something else. The district one was it district? Yeah, one? I believe so. That they gave it to. So my response was, "We'll take anything." <laughs> and we, and yeah, if you want to donate, we're not going to say no to. We'll figure it out from there. So. Well, well, you know. Fortnite hot dogs. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Well, breakfast sandwiches. I love breakfast sandwiches. Um, also, under other, our community survey has been completed by our analyst, James Hubble from SUNY. Um, and we're hoping to push that out by the end of this week. We're in the final stages. I was on the old website today of creating a news and announcement with the link and all that good stuff to hopefully send that out by the end of this week. I just need to confirm with James, because he wasn't in today, that the original link he sent that I have um, utilized for the actual website is going to be the link to get everyone to that. So we would encourage our community members. Again, this was another part of um, our police reform and implementation, You know, getting that feedback from our community about how we can uh, do things better and serve them uh, in the capacity that they want to stay. So we're excited that we're almost there with that. Gene and I had spoken, um, I'm just uh, sort of adding something that wasn't on the agenda. There's gonna be some work done that was a part of a complete streets project for a sidewalk on Plum Street over by Hillside. And I didn't get a chance to call um, Superintendent Ray Smith yet, but I think there was a discussion about possibly making that block, block and a half, no parking because of the amount of space that the sidewalk is going to take up on that road. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we may need to have a discussion with Ray and then kind of talk about being a public hearing. So you know. that's all I have. Does anybody have anything else they want to discuss? Add am I missing? Is that no. No. And then I just have our resolutions. Um, on there, what has anything? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And that concludes this meeting. Our next meeting is going to be for October 5th, 2023 at 3.30 p.m. Thank you for everybody for attending. Yeah. Yep.